Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone, wherever you're joining us from. You're welcome to this evening's Digging Deep Bible session. Before we start the service, let's just go ahead and just thank the King of Things. Let's just thank the mighty God who is and who is to come, who has made us to see today. Let's just thank him. Let's just give him all the praise. Let's just give him all adoration. For we slept, but the Lord made us see another day. Psalm 136, verse Verse 1 mm -hmm. goes and then tells us that we should give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his faithful love endures forever. We should give thanks to the Lord, the God of gods, for his faithful love endures forever. We should give thanks to the Lord of Lord because his faithful love endures forever. We should give thanks to him who alone does mighty things for his faithful love endures forever. We should give thanks to him who has made the heavens so skillfully for his mercies endure forever. We should give thanks to him who has made who has placed the earth amongst the waters for his mercies endure forever. We should give thanks to him who made the heavenly light, who, who, who makes the sun rule by day for his mercies endures forever. Let's just go and I just thank this God because his mercies endures forever. That I am alive up to today is because of his mercy. That you and I are here up to today is because of his mercy. That we have a roof over our head is because of the mercy, that is because of his faithful love, the love upon our lives. Beloved, wherever you are, let's just go ahead and just thank this God. Let's just bless him because he's a faithful God. He's a God that reigns over the affairs of man. Wherever you are right now, just thank him, just worship him for who he is to you, for good health is his faithful love that is that has kept you in good health. Or let's just go ahead and just bless him, give him all the praise, give him a nation. For good health, oh God, I say thank you. I don't take it for, for granted. To have a work to go to, oh God, I say thank you. I do not take it for granted. I give you all the praise. I give you all adoration for provision, for food to eat that I even that I'm even able to eat. Oh God, it is you only. You know these little things we take for granted. So people are even unable to even sleep for like more than an hour. So people are able. They're not even able to even keep food down themselves, down, down, down their stomach, but you and I can, and we're thanking God because he's a good God. Let's thank him for anybody that we know who might be on a, on a sick bed right now, who might be going through one thing or the other, one pain, one suffering, wherever it may be. Let's thank him because we know that at the end of this service, he will do that, he will heal them, and so much more in the name of Jesus. Let's just go ahead and just thank this God. When this is thanksgiving never get tired than thanking god as pds always is wherever we thank god for never becomes our prayer point so let's thank him because this is our testimony loading oh god i am so grateful i'm so grateful oh god for the little things lord god to even eat to sleep to wake up to walk without being assisted i say thank you for family lord god i say thank you to even be alive lord god right now for good health oh god i thank you wherever i have might have complained oh lord in the little or in uh, annoying or unknowingly, I ask you, Lord God, for forgiveness. Oh God, receive my praise, receive my adoration. Oh God, I just say thank you. I give you all the praise, I give you adoration. Oh Lord, there is no one like you. Oh God, accept our praises. Oh God, accept our thanks. Oh God, we commit this service to your only hands. Oh God, we ask, Lord God, that you should take permit control. Oh God, we commit the airwaves. Oh God, we commit the technical team. Lord God, oh God, we soak everything in the blood of Jesus. We soak our set money to the blood of Jesus as it brings the world. We soak it with the blood of Jesus. We commit every aspect of today's Bible study. Oh God, we ask, Lord God, that you should take permit control. Oh God, we welcome you to our midst. Oh Lord, Lord God, visit us like never before, oh God. Dive in, oh God, to the to today's service, Lord God. That your name and your name alone, Lord God, will be glorified in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. As you get ready to join into the service, to join the Royal Voices, I just want to encourage you right now, the link right there, please share, invite your friends, invite your loved ones. They don't have to move around, just press that button. Whilst you're sharing, don't forget to also subscribe to our channels so that you're on board with everything we're doing here at Royal Connections. We declare this service open in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's rise as we invite the Royal Voices for our praise and worship. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Good evening, church. It's time to praise God. It's time to thank our maker. Hallelujah. Thanks. We the grateful give thanks to the 
Holy One. Give thanks because of given Jesus Christ is so. given Jesus Christ is so For his faithfulness, God has been so good. Give thanks, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Will you therefore lift your hand to heaven and let's give God great, great thanks tonight. Appreciating him for his blessings. Appreciating him for his power. Appreciating him for his presence. Appreciating him for what he has done for us and what he's doing right now. Let's do it together. Go ahead and appreciate God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good and his mercies endure forever. Psalm 136 and verse 1. So somebody lift your voice tonight and go ahead and give God big, big thanks. Come on, let's do it together. Lord, we give you thanks, O oh God. We magnify you, O oh God. We exalt you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our King. Thank you for being our Lord. We just want to appreciate you, Jehovah. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for reigning in the affairs of men. We will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So we shall be saved from our enemies. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the rock. Let the rock of our salvation be exalted. Come on. Lord, we thank you for being God. We thank you for being everything to us. We thank you for answer to prayers. We thank you for your presence in our midst. 
We thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for the blessedness of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for counting us worthy. Thank you for making us fit in the beloved. We are so grateful, O oh God. We are so very, very grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all you have done, we say thank you. For what you are doing right now, we say thank you. For the battles you fought and we didn't know about, we say thank you. For making yourself to be who you are, we say thank you. Oh, blessed be your holy name, O oh God. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have given thanks. Come on, can I hear your loudest? Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And I want to read to you from verse 2. I wish I thank God a little more. The Bible says, Ephesians 1 from verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. May that become your story from today in Jesus' name. It says, Blessed be God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So tonight we're going to thank him on five levels. First level, Lord, thank you for blessing me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Will somebody go ahead and appreciate the Almighty God? Say, Lord, thank you for blessing me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Let's go ahead and do that together. Lord, we praise you tonight, O God. And we say thank you, my Father, for blessing us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Jesus, we have come to say thank you. As a family of faith, we have come to say thank you. As a people of faith, we have come to say thank you for blessing us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Come on. We say thank you for blessing us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for blessing us. Thank you so much for keeping us. Thank you so much for standing by us. Thank you so much for blessing us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Lord, we are grateful. Jehovah, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful for all you have done for us. We say thank you. Blessed be your holy name, O God. Thank you, our Father. We praise you, Jesus. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have given thanks. Can I hear you shout a loud amen? The Bible says, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Number two, thanks given tonight. Say, Lord, I thank you because you chose me before the foundations of the world. Shall we go ahead and appreciate the Almighty God together? Say, Father, thank you for choosing me before the foundations of the world. I am so, so grateful. Oh, Father, thank you for choosing me before the foundations of the world. Jehovah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for choosing me before the foundations of the world. Oh, God, I am so grateful, my Father. I so exalt you and I worship you and I appreciate you very deeply that you have chosen me before the foundations of the world. Can somebody go ahead and appreciate God tonight for your own salvation, that he chose you before the foundations of the world. Come on. That he made you, he made you, he chose you out of all the issues of the world. He chose you and I. Come on. He chose you before the foundations of the world that you and I should be only and without blame. So go ahead. Say, Lord, I thank you for choosing me. I thank you for choosing me from the foundations of the world. Who am I in heaven and on earth but you? Father, thank you, O oh God. I could never thank you enough. I couldn't have chosen myself, but you did, Father. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, 
for choosing me before the foundations of the world. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Somebody shout, thank you, Lord. Now then, Ephesians chapter 1, now verse 4b. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4b says that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I like that. He chose you and I to be holy and without blame. Would you lift your voice to heaven and type it out, noise all over the world, say, Lord, thank you for making me, choosing me to be holy and without blame. Go ahead now. I appreciate the Almighty God for choosing you. Come on. That he has chosen you to be holy and without blame before him in love. Let's go ahead and appreciate the Almighty God. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for choosing us to be holy and without blame before you. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us, O oh God, to be holy and without blame before you, O oh God. We praise your name, Jesus. We praise your name, Jesus. All heavens declare the glory of the Lord that you chose us to be holy and without blame, even through the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody help me honor God tonight. Go ahead, go ahead, appreciate him. Father, thank you for choosing me to be holy and without blame, O oh God, before you, even in love, my Father. I praise your name, O oh God. I thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have given thanks. Amen. Now then, Bible says, listen to this, in verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Now that's powerful. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Now that's important. He has predestinated us to the adoption of children. Why don't you thank God tonight that he predestined you to be a child of God. He has predestined us to be children by adoption. Thank him that he has adopted you into his family. Thank him that you belong in the family of God. Thank you that you belong in his family. Come on. Go ahead now. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Yes, yes, that I belong in the family of God. I am so, so, so grateful. Come on. Somebody go ahead, lift him up tonight. Say, Father, thank you for the adoption that I enjoy you. Yes, yes, you've adopted me into your family, oh God. I am grateful, my Father. I magnify you, Lord, and I exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For adopting me into your family, oh God. Somebody go ahead. Mazakata la bragado zante. Mande brezo tondo rianda la bragadia. Me kate brezo tenda liandoshta. Mazita le bregadia. Father, thank you, oh God. I give you praise and I give you glory that you have adopted me into the family of God. I am a child of God. I'm a friend of God. Somebody go ahead. Appreciate him tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The loudest amen as an adopted child of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then you're going to thank him. The fifth level of thanksgiving tonight is in verse 6. To the praise of of the glory of his praise, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. I love that. He has made you and I accepted in the beloved. Romans chapter 3 verse 24 says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? He has made you accepted. Oh, glory. He bestowed grace upon us. He bestowed favor upon us. He made you and I accepted. 
we were not acceptable, but he made us accepted. Glory to God. Somebody lift your voice tonight and lift your and say, Father, thank you for making me accepted in the beloved. My God, your family may not accept you, but the family of God accepts you. So go ahead. Say, Lord, thank you for making me accepted in the beloved. I give you praise, oh God. Come on, somebody now. Go ahead. I appreciate him. Yes, yes, yes. Father, thank you, oh God, that you have made me accepted in the beloved. I am so grateful tonight. You have made me accepted in the beloved. Oh, my father. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father, that you have made me accepted in the Beloved. I give you praise and I give you glory. Thank you for that favor you bestowed upon me. Thank you for accepting me in the Beloved. I am so grateful. Come on, somebody. Lift him up, lift him high, magnify him. Yes, he has made you accepted in the Beloved. Hallelujah. Makita Lebrayando Zatenda Lebregedia. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to your name. In Jesus' marvelous name, we are prayed. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. He has made you accepted. Somebody shout, I'm accepted. Come on, talk to me. Shout, I'm accepted. Come on now. Shout, I am accepted. In other words, heaven is pleased with you. In other words, when heaven looks at you, they see the blood of Jesus and that makes you accepted. Shout again, I am accepted in the beloved. One more time, shout, I am accepted in the beloved. Shout, I am accepted in the beloved. Now, finally, I want you to now thank God for Pastor E.A. Adeboye and Pastor Mrs. Foley Adeboye for 40 years as general overseer of RCCG. Would you lift your voice right now and begin to thank God for the exploits they have been able to accomplish, for the achievements God has worked through them, for God working through them on their behalf that he has expanded the church, increased the church. Would you go ahead and do that right now? Say, Lord, we are grateful for the general overseer. We're thankful for his wife. Thank you for 40 years, oh God, as the general overseer of RCCG. Somebody go ahead and appreciate the Lord on their behalf. Would you do that with me tonight? Come on. Say, Lord, thank you for your son and your daughter. Thank you for the journey so far. Thank you for your blessings upon them. Thank you for your hand upon them. Thank you for your mercy that they have found. Thank you, Lord, for expanding the church under that under them, oh God. Thank you for the mighty things you have done through them. Oh Lord, we come tonight to say thank you. We come tonight to appreciate you, oh God, on behalf of your son and your daughter, Jehovah. Thank you. Thank you that you are work with them. You are working with them. You are working through them. You are working on their behalf. You have not left them comfortless. Oh, Father, as a church, we come tonight to say thank you. As a church tonight, we come to appreciate you for them. Come on. Manze pale bragado yandosh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your name, O oh God. We praise your name, O oh God. Come on. We honor you, Jesus. Come on. We adore you, Jesus. Yes, yes. On behalf of Pastor P.A. Adeboye and Pastor Fulu Adeboye, would you appreciate God tonight? Would you thank God for his grace upon their lives? Would you thank God that he has kept them 40 years as the general overseer? What an honor. What a journey. What a privilege. Come on. I appreciate God for good health. I appreciate God for anointing. I appreciate God for his presence. I appreciate God for his power. I appreciate God for loving them so much. We are grateful, oh God. And we bless your holy name. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are giving thanks. And finally, you're going to thank God that God will yet sustain them. God will yet uphold them. God, we yet keep them. Say, Lord, 
Thank you for yet upholding Pastor Yadeboe. For yet upholding Pastor Folu Adeboe. Thank you, Lord, for yet working with them. Thank you, Lord, for Lord strength for yet strengthening them. Thank you, Lord, because their latter shall be greater than their former. Thank you, because there is more ahead of them than behind them. Are you thanking God at all? Thank you, Lord, because they will accomplish much more, even in the land of the living. Thank you for good health and strength. Come on. And grace, my Father. Oh, we praise you. Yes, 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 all ill, the power of Jesus him. Thank you because they will thank God on their behalf because they will keep pressing towards the price for the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you because they will never know a better yesterday. Thank you, Lord, because strength won't fail them. Grace won't fail them. Oil won't fail them. Anointing won't fail them. Your presence will not be far from them. They will, there will be no scandal around their lives, oh God. In the name of Jesus, thank you for sending them the help they need in this season. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. We exalt you, Father, for that dear moment, you, oh God. Thank you. Thank you for better days ahead of them. For greater days ahead of them. For your glory is upon them. Come on. Thank you for announcing them supernaturally. You have done so much for them, Lord. But we know you can still do much more. Thank you for asking the deepest prayers of their heart. Thank you for bringing them to pass. Thank you, Lord, for doing for them what they can do for themselves. Thank you, Lord, for the prayers over us is being answered. We give you praise, O God, and we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus, my fellow's name, we have given thanks. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Come on now. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Come on. Glory to Jesus. Yes, yes. The best amen you can muster. Hallelujah. Now then, I'd like you to do something for me and say, Lord, thank you for 40 years of successful ministry. Thank you, Lord, for successful, for 40 years of successful ministry for Daddy and Mommy Jew. I want everybody online to write that for me. I want it to be recorded now. I'd like to say, Lord, thank you for 40 years of successful ministry for Daddy and Mommy Jew. Would you write it out? Thank you, Lord, for 40 years of successful ministry as the overseers. I want everyone to write it out right now. Write out on the platform. That's right. Write it out. Write it out. Let's send it as a message to them. Come on out. Lord, thank you for 40 years of successful, victorious, progressive ministry as the overseers of RCCG. Can you oblige me tonight and just write that out? God bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's write it out. Oh, Lord, we thank you for 40 years. 40 years, oh, yes, of successful, progressive ministry. Oh, yes. For Daddy and Mommy Gio, come on, as overseers. Come on, would you do that? Yes, yes, let's write it out together. Hallelujah. Come on, as a message to them. Hallelujah. As a message to them, celebrating them. Oh, glory to Jesus. Yes, 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 celebrating them tonight. Oh, yes, 40 years, so says the mission of Daddy and Mommy Gio. Write it out, beloved. Write it out, write it out. Let everyone see. Yes, that's it. God bless you. Aha, aha. Yes, 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 yes. And as you do that, once you finish writing, let's keep clapping and celebrating Jesus tonight. That's it. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. I'm sure Royal Connections is writing it out tonight. I'm fully persuaded of that. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Glory, glory. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the love of your son and your daughter. We are clapping for them tonight. We are celebrating them tonight. Glory to Jesus. Honor to your name, O oh God. Yes, yes, on their behalf, O oh God. Yes, yes, we praise your name. We praise your name. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Awesome God. Mighty God. Excellent God. Glorious God. Yes, we are so grateful. 40 years. Yes, yes, yes. 40 years. Lord, we are so very grateful for 40 powerful years of successful ministry. We give you praise, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. Once you finish writing, celebrate. Yes. Clap your hands, oh ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Those in Canada haven't seen your writing. Those watching from Virginia in US haven't seen your writing. Come on up. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate Jesus together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 40 years of successful ministry. And so, we well, want to thank God for them. And today also is Pastor Tolugunle's birthday. So, Lord, thank you for the life of your son and servant, whose birthday is today. Pastor Tolugule, we pray for him that your arm will remain mighty upon his life. Your presence will not be far from him. Your glory will yet overshadow him. Your hand shall be mighty upon him, O God. We pray you give him a special birthday gift to God that men cannot give to him in the name of Jesus. We ask that you visit him afresh in a very unique way in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you answer the deepest prayers of his heart in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, Holy Spirit. We are so grateful, O oh God. Bless your son. Bless your servant. And everyone whose birthday is today, Lord, remember them for good. And this week in particular, in Jesus' marvelous name, we are praying. Somebody shout aloud, Amen. Glory to God. So, Lord, as we go into your word tonight, we pray that you will speak to us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant us access to your revelation, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, do for us all we can do for ourselves, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Redeemer. We love you, O oh God, in Jesus. Mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Glory to God. Now, tonight I want to share with us on the journey I started three weeks ago, engaging on matters of the mind. We we're discussing matters of the mind, part three. And in particular, engaging your mind for a great year. How do I engage my mind for a great year, for the year ahead? How do I engage my mind for a successful year? How do I engage my mind for the year? How, how, how? That's the focus tonight. Matters of the mind, part three, engaging your mind for the year, 2021. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Engaging your mind for the year. Glory to Jesus. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 becomes very critical tonight. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And perfect will of God. Tonight, Talking about engaging your mind for the year. Now, if you look at the scriptures closely, a few things become very visible to us. Understand, number one, that your eyes are a gateway into your soul. 
your eyes are a gateway into your soul. And that's why your eyes serve as receptors or projectors. When people look at your eyes, they can say, how are you doing? Are you okay? It's all well with you simply by looking at your eyes. Your eyes are a gateway to your soul. That's why they say, sometimes when we are doing vows for people, we say, look at each other, eyeball to eyeball, to be sure this is the person you are talking about because your eyes betray what is in your soul. Very critical. Then your heart is the screen. So if your eyes are the receptors and projectors, your heart is the screen. And then your mind is the computer or the memory where things are stored, where things are kept. Folks, the impact of your life will largely depend on two things. The people you meet and the books you read. And that's critical. In the next five years, the impact your life will make and the direction your life will go will largely depend on who you meet and the books you read. And so, the company you keep and the information that comes to you. You see, when information comes to you and is meditated upon, okay, through knowledge, knowledge comes, becomes information, meditation takes place, it becomes absorbed, some of them might become revelation to you, which your life acts upon. So important. And so, our mind, therefore, is the control center of our lives. I say it again. Your mind and my mind is the control center of our lives. What your life will be, my life will be, is a function of your mind. Third John 2 say, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Your mind is in your soul. What this now? So, in essence, when you change your thinking, you change your whole life. When you change your thinking, you change your whole life. Why? Your mind is the seat where you do rigorous thinking. Sometimes we use the mind and the brain interchangeably. So when you change your thinking, your life changes. So if you are going to have a productive year, a successful year, a wonderful year, an excellent year, better than any year you have had, it means that you will have to change the ways you have been thinking and the ways you have been engaging your mind. That's why I'm teaching this tonight. Because the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There are two pathways that comes to us that are available to every believer. Two pathways. There are two pathways. Number one, the first pathway is conformation. To be conformed. That's the first pathway. Conformation. And the second pathway, the second pathway is transformation. It's either you're being conformed or you're being transformed. I want to talk about this for a few moments. The word conform comes from a Latin word conformare which means take the shape of. I said it again. It means to take the shape of something. Let me give an illustration to you. Look at this flannel now. Everyone can see this flannel. Now, I want, this is the flannel I've just bought. New piece of cloth. Now, I want to use it to sew something. What this? If I bring this item on my hand and I place on this flannel and I cut this piece of cloth according to the size, according to the shape of this thing, what I've done is I've made the piece of cloth to conform 
to the shape of this item in my hand. Let me go a little bit further. If I take this pen, all right, so this is the pen I want to pattern this cloth on. Now, this cloth has a lot of possibilities. It can do many things. But to be conformed means I pattern the cloth after the shape of this pen. That's what it means to be conformed. Okay? That's what it means to be conformed. And don't forget that. So, conform means to take the shape of something. Now, what is? Conform is an external action upon us that makes us that shapes us into the shape of the world listen it is an outward behavior or change that is what is called conform it's an outward change walking inwards so bible says don't let the world shape you or rather don't take the shape of the world do not be conformed to this world do not take the shape of this world do not take the shape of your community do not change the shape of your society do not take the shape of what you are hearing you see the shape of what you are hearing now listen to me is fear oh people are dying this is happening economic is collapsed economy is collapsing things are going wrong that is the shape of what you're earning bible said don't take that shape otherwise you will have fear you will have anxiety you will have all kind of things happening to you but the bible said no take the second pathway which is transformation to be conformed is to take the shape of first john chapter 5 verse 19 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, Bible says, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. In other words, the world we live in is wicked, and you and I must not take the shape of wickedness. Can you say a better amen? You must not take the shape of wickedness at all, at all. If we were to read it in Amplified Version, it will give you a better illustration. The world lies in wickedness, but you and I must not take their shape. All right? The second pathway, which is critical, is the transformation pathway. Transformation pathway. Now, let me put it this way. Transformation is to undergo a complete change. Transformation is to undergo a complete change. Somebody shall change. Come on. A complete change. That's transformation. It is an internal job that shows on the outside. It's an internal job that shows on the outside. So when we are talking of conformation, we are talking of don't let the teachings of the world, the morals of the world, the ways of the world, the wisdom of the world, the values of the world, the beliefs of the world mold you into their shape. Don't allow it, but rather be transformed. It's a dynamic exit from a godless world. Transform is to undergo a complete change within, whereby our own subjective inner world is renewed. Glory to Jesus. So, transformation is we are either being worked on by this present evil age, which is unbelieving and disbelieving, full of fear or doubt, or you are rising up to lay hold of our salvation, to be changed and become more like Jesus. That's what transformation is. Transformation means you change from within to become more like Him. Glory to God. Listen, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, We all with open face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are now changed, we metamorphosize into the same image, even by the Spirit of the Lord. We are changing from glory to glory. So transformation is an internal job that demonstrates on the outside. If you look at a butterfly, it has undergone changes. And that's why it's important that you and I appreciate the fact that your transformation is not a one-time event. No, sir. Transformation is not a once-in-a-lifetime event. 
It's a continuous, constant event. Glory to God. It's a dynamic thing which works its way outwards. Hallelujah. Now, why have I gone through this introduction? Is that if this year shall be different from every year you have lived in, then it's important you embark on the journey of constant, consistent transformation. Somebody shout transformation. You have to embark on that journey. And it starts by renewing your mind. Renewal of your mind. Because a mind that is renewed is positioned to produce a new thing. A mind that is conformed will remain perpetually defeated, frustrated, unable to deliver and accomplish anything that God asked for them. But I'm fully persuaded that 2021 shall be the best year you have ever lived in, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Bible says you will prosper even as your soul prosper. Can somebody write right there, I am transformed in Jesus' name. So, to get your mind to produce this year than other years, there are a few things I'm going to share with you. To engage your mind is the first action. To engage your mind, there are three things quickly. Number one, you must understand there is a battle going on inside of us. There, to engage your mind, first of all, have an understanding there is a battle going on inside of you. There is a battle going on inside of you, inside of you. Inside of you, inside of you, inside, there's a battle. And the battle is of the mind. Our mind is a prime target for the enemy. You see, the devil comes to fight in your mind. Every battle you are facing, every challenge you are facing, beloved, is from the mind. Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. It's from the mind. Victory is from the mind. Defeat is from the mind. Success is from the mind. Productive years from the mind. It is from the mind. So, that means you must be careful the thoughts that comes into your mind and that you dwell on. Because the enemy has come to steal, to kill and destroy. But it still spread from your mind. Ten spies were sent. Go and check out the nation for us. That we might go and possess. Twelve spies. They got there. The devil suggested to them they were inconsequential. And that's what they said. That we are nobodies. We are too small. We are like grasshoppers. How did they arrive at that? From their mind. Listen. When you see a defeated person, it's from the mind. When you see a successful person, it's from the mind. You see, your mind is the center of our lives. I can't say it enough. So there are four ways thoughts come to our minds. Number one, from God. Thoughts come from God. God gives you thoughts by His Spirit. You read your Bible, the thoughts of God come to you. When you meditate long enough on scriptures, you have the thoughts of God. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thought, I think, towards you. Thoughts of peace are not of evil, to give you hope and a future. Number two, thoughts also come from Satan and his demons. So the devil tells you, it starts a thought into you. You are useless. You are a nobody. You are a failure. Don't you understand Look at your mates. They've all achieved. They've got married. They've had children. Look at your life. You are a failure, a colossal disappointment. And you to begin to say truly, actually, or tell you, look at you. You are so ugly. Nobody's going to marry you. I start thinking, wait a minute, because I'm ugly. No, you're not ugly. No, no. You are a beautiful person. Thoughts come from devils and their demons. Why would somebody suddenly become suicidal? He's from the enemy. Say you are worthless. Kill yourself. Harm yourself. Enjoy yourself. If you go there now, you are going to fail. You are going to have an accident on the way. Now that's the enemy telling you that. 
thoughts come from the devils. And you know what? Ah, my God, help me here. That's why last week I told you, guard your gate, your eye gate, your ear gate. Guard what comes into you. The movies you watch, my God, information is coming into you. The music you listen to, information is coming to you. you got to guard it. Why? The enemy uses those things to insert thoughts into our mind. Why would somebody stand and jump on the train path? There are thoughts raging in the mind. Tonight we come against every devilish thought, every demonic thought, every thought from the pit of hell, contrary to your journey in the name of Jesus. We come against them now in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, I am loved of the Lord. I'm loved of the Lord. I'm loved of the Lord. Sickness, death, poverty, failure, are thoughts from the pit of hell, from the devil and his demons. Somebody suddenly wakes up and say, I just feel, Pastor, my marriage will break up. How would you say, how did you come to that? Thoughts. Number three, thoughts come from our subconscious. Now, this is very critical tonight. I'm going to undo that as a topic another day from our subconscious. But let me throw this in. When you are growing up, there are things you imbibe in your subconscious you never knew. There are things that have been printed on your mind, on your heart. Remember I told you your mind is a memory. Okay, it stores every information. There are informations you have stored that are in the subconscious. You never knew they are there. Let me give you a little example here. When you are young, there are some things some of our parents did. You said, no, I won't behave like this. But look at you now, this age. There are things you do now, you wonder, why am I behaving like this? Exactly what my posse or my mom see did is because those things were printed there, you never knew, your subconscious. In fact, until you change that, you can't change the trajectory of your life. Look at how you spend money. Who thought you to spend money the way you spend money? Think about it. Unforgiveness, where did it come from? These are subconscious things that we have imbibed, we have taken on, and we never knew. Some of us are critical of everything and anything people do. It's on the subconscious. Listen, this year cannot be better until you understand these things. So if you can't give them compliment, they never receive it. They feel you have a sinister plan. You just think something is wrong. These are things that are subconscious. Number four, thoughts also come from a cycle of influence. In other words, the news you hear, the friends you keep, what you hear around you from a cycle of influence, thoughts also come. Thoughts also come. And it's important that you understand this and begin to wage war against the ones that are not of God. Second Corinthians, the Bible gave us how to do this. In chapter 10, verse 4 to 5, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5, the Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Now, strongholds are things that are formed in our hearts, and they are there. So Bible says our weapons are not carnal. They are mighty through God to pull down strong goals. What is making the year not to be great are the strong goals. So important. Now look at the scripture again. It said, casting down imaginations and everything and every eye thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What, let's look at that scripture for a moment. Bible is saying your mind is capable of forming images. Images that come from thoughts from God, from the devil, from your subconscious, from the cycle you have. And then Bible now says anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you ought to cast it down. You must bring it to captivity, to the obedience of Christ, which means there is a battle. A battle between the knowledge of God and the thoughts of our heart. 
the one that prevails is the one that determines the direction of your life. This year, by the Spirit of the living God, everything shall bow to the knowledge of God in Jesus' name. Can I have a good amen? So then, cast down things. So when the enemy suggests to you that you are dead, you are a failure, you say, no, I cast that down. That's not the mind of God for me. That's not the knowledge of God for me. Glory to God. Renewal of mind. Number two thing you need to do, all right, apart from casting down, apart from understanding the battle in your mind, number two is renewal of, these are the principles, renewal of minds must be constant and consistent. Renewal of your mind must be constant and consistent. In other words, your mind is not renewed one time and it's over. It is a consistent effort. It's a constant effort. You renew today, you renew tomorrow. You keep on renewing. You keep on renewing. You keep on working at it, working on it, working at it until you get to where you need to get to. Renewal of minds must be constant and consistent. And how do we accomplish that? By the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit. Hallelujah. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. So important. Without the Holy Ghost, mind can be renewed. And then through His Word. By the Spirit and through His Word. By the Spirit and through His Word. Jesus says, and He taught us, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, He says, He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Out of the mouth of God. That's how man must live. Do you see? So, in other words, I can't say I fed on food last year and I'm not feeding today or last month I'm not feeding now. No. Feeding must be continuous and consistent. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, I must become a student of the world. I must allow the world to come into me. I must allow the world to dominate my thought, to dominate my heart. I saw that when I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the world. When I'm talking, I'm talking about the world. So that the world can give me understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, without the word of God, the thought of God will be far away from us. So important. Second Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 to 17. What this now? What this now? He said that from a child, Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All that, all that, now watch it. From a child, can I ask you a question? Have you known the scriptures since your childhood? Do you see now? That means the level of wisdom you and I have is correspondent, dependent upon the amount and the revelation of the scriptures we have. So for Timothy, who knew scripture from a young age, he was wise. Many of us came, gave our life to Christ much later. That's why scripture is important. Because all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable to, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Are you learning something tonight? that the man of God may be perfect, totally furnished unto good works. So that means when I read the scripture and I receive them humbly, it profits me. There is a profit in every scripture. May you benefit from the profit in Jesus' name for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Are you getting that? For instruction in righteousness. So renewal of mind is a constant and a consistent effort. Number three, how do I engage my mind? Beloved, number three, very simple, by meditation. By meditation. 
Meditation means take the word in, think about it, walk it through your heart, bring it out again, think about it until it becomes part and parcel of you. What to meditate upon is what you ultimately become. Meditation. Joshua was told in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Listen, success in a year is a function of the state of your mind. And that's why Joshua was to fill your mind, meditate on the word day and night, day and night, day and night. My prayer for you from today. May the world profit you in Jesus' name. Meditation, think on these things. Psalm 119, verse 96 to 100. Psalm 119, verse 96 to 100. He says, I have seen an end of all perfection, but the commandment is exceeding broad. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through my commandments, hast made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Verse 99, have more understanding than all my teachers. Students, hear this. For your testimonies and my meditation. Come on. Look at verse 100. I understand more than the Asians. Why? Because I keep your precepts. My God, I keep your precepts. I keep your precepts. You see, understanding that my teachers, why? Your testimonies and my meditation. I love your law. It's my meditation all the day. Actually, in this season of fasting and prayer, let them become your meditation all the day. Meditation. Let me bring it home by bringing some examples to you, and I hope you understand this. How? Engaging your mind for the year. How? Let's look at a few scriptures, case study. St. Matthew chapter 12. Don't miss this scripture. If you will get nothing tonight, please, this is important. St. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Bible says, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. Hold on to that scripture for a moment. Please look at that scripture, I beg of you. A good man, what is now? Out of the good treasure of where? Of the heart, his mind, innermost being that nobody can see, bring forth good things. Which means that whatever you bring forth is coming from your mind, your inner man that nobody can see. That's why it's important to renew your mind. Now, let me go further. Look at that scripture. A wealthy man bring forth wealth out of the a wealthy man, okay, out of the wealth treasure of his earth, bringeth forth wealth. A poor man, out of the poor treasure of his earth, bringeth forth poverty. A failed businessman, out of the failure in his heart, bringeth forth failed business. My God. A failed relationship. Out of the failure of his or her, bring her forth a fair relationship. That's why the Bible says, an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bring her forth evil things. Who knows is evil? Who has seen that is evil? You look like him, you look like any other person, but the art is far away. That's why tonight I've come to teach you, I've come to preach to you. Beloved, let's open our mind unto God. What I am, what you are, is a function of your mind. You attract who you are on the inside. You cannot attract something else. You attract who you are on the inside, beloved. You attract who you are on the inside. A good man. Don't forget that scripture. It might be the most important scripture this year. If you check out your productivity, then ask yourself, what's in my mind? I've just sent, I've just delivered somebody right now. Someone just received their deliverance just now. Right now. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Someone just got their deliverance now. 
if you are quarrelsome, it's not because people made you quarrel. No, it's what's in your heart. I'm telling you, this can be the most important scripture for you this year. So the question was inside of my heart. Let's look at two examples in the Bible. Glory to God. Your life is a manifestation of what's in you. The treasure inside you that produces the change, not the external changes. Don't forget it. It's the treasure inside you. When your mind changes, your life changes. In Luke chapter 15, say Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 18. I hope you are tweeting all these things all over the world. Put them on your on your DP everywhere. Luke 57. Last week we, we looked at the elder brother. Let's learn something from the younger brother. Bible says, when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Come on. Did you get that scripture? That young man said to himself, I will arise and go to my father. In other words, the man said, wait a minute. He looked at himself, assessed himself, and said, oh no, my life should not end this way. This, this year must be better than the previous year. And nobody was going to do that for him. No. Bible says he came to himself. Perhaps he was beside himself. That means he thought deeply. He took an action. He wrote something down. He decided to change what was in his heart so that he can produce a better thing on the outside. On the outside, he had become poor. He was now looking for food to eat and he had a problem on the inside. But when he began to change on the inside, suddenly his actions began to change. And the father welcomed him because his mind had changed. Today, I lift my hand and I pray for somebody. May you receive the courage to change your mind by the word of God, by the spirit of God, by the meditation of the word, in the name of Jesus. There's another woman in the Bible. In St. Matthew chapter 9, 20 and 21. These people did awesome things. In Matthew chapter 9, 20 and 21, the Bible says, and behold a woman which was deceased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him action and touched the hem of his garment action for she said within herself if i may within can you see that she didn't talk to nobody she had no meeting with no one, but at a meeting with herself, she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Can I ask you a very honest question? And I need an answer. When did she become whole? Come on, talk to me. When did this woman become whole? Was it when she met Jesus? and taught Jesus, or before then? Come on. When did the prodigal boy become delivered from poverty? Was it when he met the father, or before then? Come on, what's your answer? I'm interested. In her mind, glory to God. She became healed inside of her, before she ever saw Jesus. Ah. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. This year will never be better until before you meet. Ah, Carosa. Listen to me. I don't care where you are now. You might be in a room only, living on one, in one room, just in one bed. But sir, if your mind can conceive your mansion, if your mind can conceive your winning of souls, if your mind can conceive healing the sick, if your mind can just receive it, ah, Maracataba 
fire. If you can come to your senses before you step up, things will change dramatically for you. I am telling you, I am telling you, I don't need to pray. It's before I pray that the answer will come to you. You have to come to yourself first. You have to allow your mind to do something. The woman said in her mind, yeah, before she saw Jesus, if I may, she said it. In other words, once she said it, she resolved it in her heart. It was all over. It was a matter of time. It was a matter of time. If you resolve in your mind that poverty is broken, if you resolve in your mind that sorrow is over, if you resolve in your mind that I will not be frustrated, if you resolve in your mind that a new beginning will start, I am telling you right now, once you resolve in your mind, things begin to attract themselves to you. I am telling you right now, if you resolve in your mind that poverty is over, I am telling you that sickness is gone. Right now, you begin to attract health and healing. I am telling you right now, in the name of Jesus, all you need to do is say it. Resolve in your mind. Change your mind. Change your mind. I am not disfavored. No, sir. I am loved. Change your mind. Change your mind. So question, therefore, as I close, as I close, as I close, the next few minutes, I shall close. How do you change? How to change for a great year? What are the five things we can learn from these two individuals? Five things. Number one, take responsibility for your change. Take responsibility for the year. The devil is not your problem. You are your problem. I am my problem. Five things. I'm telling you, take responsibility for your change. Don't wait for anyone to tell you to change. Don't wait on people to help you change. Take responsibility. The boy, even though he had misbehaved, he said, he reasoned. Come now, let us reason together. How many higher servants of my father have food to eat and left over? I will now arise. He didn't say I will write a letter. I will now arise. That is, he took responsibility. The woman with issue of blood have been going to all kind of doctors. Family members for 12 years, they messed her up, maligned her, spent her money. She said, if I may, not somebody else. Take responsibility for your, for your change. Take full responsibility for your life and for yourself. Don't blame God for the condition of your life. Don't blame your spouse. Don't blame your neighbor. Don't blame your boss. Don't blame the city. Listen, take responsibility. If you don't, nothing else will happen. I'm telling you. If you don't accept responsibility, nothing will work. Take responsibility so that if not, I'm telling you, on to take responsibility, you will remain out of control, incapable of change. And you'll be sentenced to a life of maintenance, running like a madman just to stay in the same place. Take responsibility. Number two, what did she do? Number two, what did they do, both of them? Rethink what you believe. Rethink what you believe. There are things you have believed before now, sir. Please rethink it. Don't be too proud to accept that you need help. Rethink what you believe. I'm telling you. There are things you are not believed that we think is true. I'm sure they put that scripture for you again. Rethink what you believe. Rethink what you believe is right and you assume is the way to undo life. Rethink those concepts you have been living your life by, which you develop growing up, some dysfunctional theories. Rethink them today. No, some people think that God hates them. God is looking for a way to smack them. Some people think that God is always looking at their sin. He wants to count your sin. No, no, no. Count your blessings instead. If you don't rethink what's going to happen, sir, Omar, you continue to live and make decisions based on thinking that is totally wrong. Rethink what you think. That's a serious word for you. Rethink what you think. You see, the elder brother could not think like the father. This boy thought like the father. 
Do you know that this woman will do show blood if she didn't take responsibility? As a woman, she was not meant to have come out. She was meant to be locked down. She was hemorrhaging. But she really thought that belief. Now, no, this Jesus loves me. He's not bad like the others. He's not judgmental like the others. She really thought what she believed. Really think what to think. Number three. Number three, what did they do? Number three, reject your old ways. Reject your status quo. This is a serious matter tonight. Reject your old ways. Pastor, what do you mean? Reject the old thoughts that come back to you and block your ability to change. It's one of the most difficult steps. Can you imagine what went through the mind of the prodigal boy? If I go back, what happens to me? Ah, why don't I live the way I've been living? Reject your old ways. Make room for new thoughts so as not to repeat the cycle of the previous year. I'm telling you. Old habits of thinking are hard to break. But you got to break them this year. If you keep away negative thought from your mind and begin to receive the real word of God and begin to believe the best about people, very shortly, very shortly, you will realize that the old ways are going. New things are happening to you. Glory to God. In other words, break the habit of acting without thinking. Begin to think before I act. Is this what is, is this what the Bible says? Is this what I should do? Is it what the word of God is saying? Before you respond to anything, ask yourself. Number four, renew your way of thinking. Very different from what I said before. Renew your way of thinking. Review, rather, not renew, forgive me. Review your way of thinking. That's a message for me. Review your way of thinking. Review. Practice new way of thinking. Review it. Practice thinking these new thoughts. Thank you so much. Listen, instead of spacing out, getting depressed, begin to review your way of thinking. Hallelujah. Review and practice a new way of thinking. Check yourself. Got to now start communicating with yourself. Why do I think like this? Review it. Why am I thinking this thought? Why do I behave like this? Why do I think like this? Can you begin to say to yourself, I, I enjoy to be debt free. I think I'm going to be debt free this year. I think God has made a way for me. So instead of getting to on the internet and ordering things. No, I'm not going to order that because I'm going to live debt free. I'm not going to borrow things, spend the credit card to buy things anymore. No, you will review your way of thinking. Glory to Jesus. As you begin to review, you are strengthening your new lifestyle. Review your way of relationship, your way of praying, your way of attending church, your way of loving God, your way of worship. And finally, finally, resound these thoughts in your heart. When I say review your way of thinking, I say capture new thoughts. Imprint them deeply in your mind by reviewing and practicing your new thinking. Review it. Then number five, resound. Everybody sh shout resound. Let your new thoughts resound out loud. Speak it out. Speak it out. And hear what you are saying. If it's not what you expect your life to be, change it instantly. I will be married. I'm a successfully married man. I'm a businessman. I'm employing 100 people. I'm mainly anointed of the Lord. I'm relevant in my generation. These are the thoughts that will dominate you. I love everyone. I love everyone. I spread the love of Christ all over the world. My life is bringing souls to Jesus. Resound it aloud. Aloud. Think to yourself and speak it out. If you don't speak your way of new, your new way of thinking out loud, it will never become a new way of thinking, which means you never change. 
Say it out. Sometimes you say, I reject that. In Jesus' name, that's not my portion. God has made a way for me. God is on my side. He is too faithful to fail. He is always on my side. That's a new way of thinking. Folks, let your thoughts sound alive. This is the secret ingredient that will create permanent change in you. I'm telling you, speak it out loud. Speak it out loud. That's all it is. The devil is afraid of what you are going to say. I see this year becoming the best for you in Jesus' name. So, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, as I conclude, what then must you think about? If you know nothing to think about, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, in digging deep, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, before I conclude, ask yourself, this thing I'm thinking, is it true that that brother hates me, that brother loves me, or that brother doesn't think well of me, number two? Is it honest? Is it just? Ask yourself. This things I'm thinking, is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it of good report? If they are not, cast out the thoughts. I commend you to God and to a season of renewal of your mind that 2021 truly for you shall be the best year you ever lived in Jesus' name. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus. Let's think the thoughts of God. One of the thoughts of God is to think on the word of God. The Bible says, so the word of God, I told you, prophets us. They told me chapter 8, verse 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God. It is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish covenant with you, that he may be with your fathers. Don't you see our God? He has never needed a man for anything. Men will always need God. Let's bring our tithes and offering to the Lord tonight. And I will come back and pray for us. Glory to Jesus. In a new way now. Now think wealth as you're about to give this offering. Think that God is about to bless you. Always think that way. So there's joy in your heart to give. Why? God is about to bless me again. Let me bring out our offering. God bless you in Jesus' name. The ways to give have been, they have been shown to us right now in the name of Jesus. Okay? Remember that God is about to bless you again. That's all it is. Okay, so let's bring this offering right now in Jesus' name. It's about to bless you again. That's all it is. Bring out your offering and bless the, and bless the Lord. The ways to give. We projected. If you are bringing your tithes today, let me pray for you. Father, bless everyone who has brought in their tithes today in Jesus' name. Please, Lord, open the heavens upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Let them receive the blessedness of a tithe in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Those bringing offering, I pray for you right now that the Lord will multiply black to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Malabro kato shanta la bragadiandos. Jengada bragado shanta la bragadiando lo bragadia. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The Lord will multiply black to you in Jesus' name. And I pray that your heaven shall be open in the name of Jesus. Mighty things, great things shall become your portion this year. You will never lack what is good in Jesus' name. The grace of God will rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, what have you received? You have received a blessing. Think about that. God has given me an avenue to bless me again. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Okay.
the best life now Oh, Jesus, I'm alive Thank you, the full announcement before we go tonight. Please know that on Friday, by the grace of God, we'll be holding our convention prayer meeting at 7 p.m. on the same platform. Please don't be late. God bless you in Jesus' name. 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Our workout training theme, SERVEOs on Saturday, 10th of January, 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. on Zoom. Please, all workers will do well to remember and be darling on time. The Lord will bless you as you do so and obey in Jesus' name. Amen. My grace of God, our worship and prayer night with communion. The first one of this year will be taking place on Friday, 29th January from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. And the theme is the faithful God. The faithful God. It's going to be glorious. Ourselves, the Lord voice, the Lord tribes, it's going to be great in Jesus' name. And by the grace of God, the Royal Women Ministry General Meeting holds on Saturday, 38th January, between hours of 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. on Zoom link also. It will be communicated to that the time. Please, ladies, let's mark that in our The Lord will bless you as you participate fully and comprehensively in Jesus' name. Amen.
na 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 wow can you feel it the winds of change is there and the team is so so let's everyone begin to nurse it all over the world let's get ready prayerfully spiritually financially emotionally and every way that we can the winds of change is there glory be to jesus it's going to be a great time in god's presence in jesus name amen shall we pray tonight Spirit of the living God, thank you for the word you have taught us. Thank you for overhauling us, transforming us, changing us, oh God. Thank you for results and unusual productivity that will come from this world. Lord, as our top life changes, our external world changes, and we pass a new thing, oh God, saving souls, setting the captives free, having a great year in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your comforting all that need to be comforted and this is not the way we need to be visited. We are so grateful. Let someone sleep well tonight. Wake us up well tomorrow morning and just give us a brand new year in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Before I take the final confession we're going to do now, I want to see if this word makes sense to you. Can you write it out for us? If the word makes sense to you, shall we take our confession together? Write it out. If the word bless me, this is what I led. To be to be encouraging to our to our team, All right? Let's write out what has the world done to you. Shall we go? Twenty twenty one is my year of sorry. I'm throwing eye against all obstacles and challenges. Thrive and triumph at will. Gaining speed in all areas of my life. God is faithful to me, to you, and to real connections. Together, we are living witnesses for Christ. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Now, as you go, can I hear you shout the loudest? Hallelujah. One, two, three, shout. Hallelujah. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me hear. Let me see. I think the word may sense to you or not. Have a good night.